Hey folks, it's Nate, and thanks for joining me as we once again look to the horizon. Well, it's time for another writing vlog update, and today we have some pretty good progress on the beginning of Burning Bright. I've given you the summary of this project in my previous vlog, so I'm just going to dive into where we're at on it. And where we are at is the beginning of page 8 of the handwritten version, which is probably about... 10% of the way in, maybe, maybe more like eight. Uh, we may have about 100 pages here, but I suspect it will be more like 80, uh, just based on the way these have unfolded in the past. And it could actually be shorter than that. Some of the stuff that I'm thinking of doing, I may cut. Um, and some things may wind up being bigger than I expected to. That happens quite a bit, actually, in the writing process. But at this point, I think I've gotten used to translating the beats in my outline into an actual story. So I, I'm thinking between 75 and 85 pages is where we're going to end when everything is handwritten. So coming along pretty good. Uh, this is about one week's worth of work and not full-time work. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, so I suspect it will be done in about a month and a half, so another six weeks of work. And what I mean by not a full week's worth of work is that I had to take a break for about a day or so as I worked out some world-building details. Burning Bright is not set in any of the settings I have used before, and while I had very clear ideas about what I wanted the world to be like, uh, in particular as regards to the non-human creatures, um, I didn't have some of the finer details worked out, and I took a break to just write those down and get them kind of organized in some index cards. Do I have one here? I don't think I have any handy to show you. Um, I do use index cards for a lot of my basic world-building stuff, uh, and I use index cards rather than writing them down on paper so that if I decide to change details before they become relevant to the story, I can just remove them from the World Bible and throw them out and then replace those details with whatever new thing uh, has taken their place or whatever refined details I have decided on. So yeah, there are a number of aspects of the world of Cogni which I had to sort out and get down on paper before I, went, I dug too deep into this part of the story, uh, especially because we were about to introduce the Ululoa, which are one of the non-human races in the world. Uh, this world is also unusual in that it's not based on Earth, which is generally how I have gone uh, with a lot of the worlds I use in my stories. Even uh, fantasy like uh, the Roy Harper Adventures is essentially geographically identical to Earth. It's, you know, just there's a lot of differences in history. There's a lot of differences in uh, flora and fauna. But the basic land masses are the same shape as we know. And that makes things simpler. Uh, in, in telling the story of uh, Burning Bright, I've had to doodle some maps out. I've had to think about the specifics of each of the creatures and the parts of the world they inhabit, um, some of the prehistory and uh, even um, legends and, and uh, supernatural forces at work in that world um, are all a big part of the world of Cogni. But the biggest detail and the thing that makes it totally different from our world is that it is flat. And, well, that's, that's not entirely true. It is round, uh, it, sort of. Um, but it has a landmass that extends all the way to the edges of it. So the, the landmass does not curve. Uh, there is not a, a traditional sky, so to speak. Um, there is simply air overhead, but uh, no celestial bodies, um, things like that. Illumination is, um, well, there, there are a lot of details which uh, I'm... I'm debating, like, to what extent I can discuss them. Um, of course, the, the cycle of day and night is something that has to be addressed as we discuss time passing. Um, but it is it's one of those things that's very difficult to work into the story without 
it being very obvious that you're just doing world building. And again, this is one of those things that I may just cut um, and I may not even address directly the day and night cycle in this story um, because it, it has a mechanic and, and the way it functions, but it's obviously nothing like what we experience because there is no room for a giant burning ball of gas to revolve around the exterior of this flat landmass. Uh, and it would also cause a lot of problems as it got near the ground on either side. So, yeah, it's been fun to do that world building. It's been a long time, as I said, since I've done this kind of heavy world building. Um, and for a flat world, it's specifically challenging because you have to think a lot about these mechanics that you wouldn't normally have to think about if you were telling even a traditional fantasy story like... Um, well, I was going to say the world of Narnia, but that's a flat world, too. So uh, something like the Lord of the Rings, where it's very much assumed that things just sort of work pretty much as they do here, uh, except for these fantasy races and, and magic and the supernatural elements. So I, I took a day off, uh, maybe a day and a half off to work on those details, um, and that slowed me down a bit. I hope to do uh, something in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 pages this week. So that's where we are on this project. There was something else I wanted to talk about that's been interesting to think about as a writer, and that is I have been working on a script with um, my fellow comic creator, Narwhal, and he has been going around trying to get an artist to draw it. And that is in, in really, really fascinating process because while I like comics, I have to this point pretty much wanted to draw all the comics I've written and working with him to kind of think about art styles and how they tie into the characters we wrote and the kind of story we want to tell and the mood and the atmosphere and et cetera, et cetera, has been a, a different kind of experience from a writing perspective, but I find it still feels like writing. And I think that's very interesting. It's, I mean, Honestly, we are functioning more as a movie director or a stage director at this point because we are trying to get an aesthetic that matches a creative vision now. But as I look at the character designs that have come in and as we have, we have debated styles and looks and feels, um, it has been very much like the collaborative process up until this point where we are trying to hammer out uh, a creative vision between, you know, now three different people um, and get something very satisfactory that creates a narrative all on its own, just visually um, and also through the, the composition to a lesser extent. Um, and even through the design, uh, Narwhal commissioned a couple of pages as a test run from an artist and decided that um, the style and the storytelling, the style of, art and also his approach to visual storytelling didn't quite match the tone we were shooting for. Um, and it was, it was a difficult decision because uh, the artist he was working with has, is a good artist, you know, no, no two ways about that. Um, Donald DeLay is a very good artist. Uh, he has a very expressive style and it's very fun, but it's a bit cartoony and that doesn't really fit with what we wrote in Tomb of Nosferatu. Yes, there is, some over-the-top action, especially uh, at the end, as as there are a lot of vampires in play and uh, a lot of craziness going on. But the tone of that bombastic action is very um, not. It's not cartoonish. I don't want to say sincere, but it, it is. It is very grounded. So to say, so to speak. I mean, sure, there are very powerful creatures doing crazy supernatural stuff in the narrative, but we want the characters to feel very grounded and very immediate. The human characters, not so much the vampires. Some of the vampires, to an extent, uh, but that's what we're going for. And that, you know, discussing that whether it would work, um, to what extent the artist could flex to provide that. These are all very interesting things to talk about and to consider. And I think that as I write, I may be writing my first solo script that I try and pitch to 
another artist in the near future. And I think this experience has been very useful for that, just to not only help me think about the kind of artist I want, but also how I will write for that artist to uh, clearly interpret what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's that was interesting. It was very illuminating. And if you are just a prose writer specifically, I would highly recommend you try and find another creative person, uh, even if it's just to, to do like a head sketch or something like that, and work through this process. Of course, pay the person um, for their time, obviously, but um, unless you know you happen to know an art student or something like that who needs to collaborate with someone on a project, in which case, yeah, go for that. Uh, but this whole process of talking these things through really helped solidify in my mind um, a few things about how to talk about characters, um, how to present them um, verbally, and, and then what kinds of things people are going to draw out of that and present visually. And if you can get a chance to, to do that just as an exercise, I think it's worth the time. And, and if you have to spend a little money on it, um, may, maybe, you know, 20, 40 bucks, um, to collaborate with an artist, even spending a little money on it is probably going to be beneficial to you because it will expand your understanding and your thoughts of how people are interpreting what you're saying and then um, putting that, even if it's just over their mind's eye, putting it into their mind's eye. So, yeah, that was that was a really fun process and was really very illuminating. Anyways, that's all I've got for you this week, and I will be back next week with our next writing update also look out this weekend i am going to start putting together um the readings of night train to hardwick and i'm going to publish them here as i did with fire spinner and if you prefer to absorb your stories that way well it's going to be here for you to enjoy and i hope you will do that let me know what you think in the comments below there are a like button and a subscribe button down there you can use as you see fit and i'll talk to you later